Hey guys, you've seen what my days are like, and you've probably seen countless other day in the life videos by software engineers from different companies. We record ourselves waking up and eating free food at the office. We film ourselves playing ping pong and then clocking out at a reasonable hour to have dinner with coworkers. What I've realized is that most of these videos, mine included, barely touch on what we actually do in our jobs. And you guys have realized this too. I'll do my best in this video to try and explain what we actually do and why we get paid. Make sure you stick to the end of the video to know exactly what I do and how everything fits in together. Anyways, I know that your time is valuable, so thank you very much for watching and let's get right into it. Before I tell you what we do, it is important to tell you what we aren't, and that's coders. A lot of people think that software engineers spend most of their days writing lines of code, and that couldn't be further away from the truth. The focus is actually on solving problems. We just use code as a means to do so. Let me give you an example of what that means. For those who are new to this world, there's a problem that every software engineer knows how to solve, and it goes by the name Tucson. Let's say you're in your neighborhood, and you have a bunch of houses all lined up. In one house, there's only one person living there. In another, there's a small family. Another has a large family with seven children. I don't know, the parents were busy. And so on. You also just so happen to have made a batch of cookies you just want to give out to your neighbors. But you can only give them out to two of your neighbors and all cookies must go. And each person can only get one cookie because everyone's on the diet. So how do you figure out which neighbors to choose? You could call your friends over to help you. You stand at one house, your friend at another, and you guys shout out how many people are in your respective houses, hoping they add up to the number of cookies you make. If they don't add up, you ask your friend to go to the next house and repeat the same thing. Rinse and repeat until you find the combination of houses that match the number of cookies you have. That would be one way of doing it, but that would require an extra friend. And let's be honest, we don't have friends. So what if there was a less taxing way of doing it, where you don't need a friend and you don't need to visit each house twice? Well, good thing you brought your notebook with you. You start off at the first house and note down how many people live there. House 1, one person. If you do this for every house and compare each house with the ones you've written down to the moment, you eventually you'll find a house that so happens to have the number of cookies you made. Write it down in code and boom, you're a software engineer. Well, not quite, but you're definitely one step closer. This problem is a classic entry-level software engineering problem that every software engineer knows how to solve. And while this is an example of that problem-solving mentality that software engineers have in our jobs, it doesn't fully describe what we actually do in our day-to-day -day life as a software engineer. So what problems do we actually solve? And I'm glad you asked that question. It's a very good one, by the way. You can mostly divide SWEs into two categories, backend and front end. Oh, also by the way, I'm gonna start saying sweet instead of software engineer just because it is shorter and you know, that's what the cool people say nowadays anyways. And I wanna be cool too, please. In order to best understand the role of front end and back end software engineers, it is best to understand how most modern day applications, websites works. This is going to be a very, very high level, 1000 feet view of how YouTube works. It is a lot more complicated than this, but just for the sake of answering what front-end and back engineers do, I'm gonna give you an example. But say you open the YouTube app and you go to the search bar at the top and search for your favorite YouTuber. What is being displayed to you, what you see, that's the front end. From the search bar to the logo to the video recommendation and the random ads that appear to the side, everything you see and can interact with, that's called the front end. And they're dedicated Swedes whose sole purpose in life is to create those buttons and those messages that you and I see and can interact with. Front end engineers transform aesthetic creative designs into running actual websites. Problems that front end Swedes solve are essentially just figuring out how to put a button in the center of a screen. Yeah, I swear, I'm not kidding. They're paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to move a button and center it in a screen. When you click on the search after searching my name in the YouTube search bar, what exactly happened? Essentially, through an API, YouTube sends a request to the backend. In this case, the request can go something like this. Hey, can you go fetch Marco Rico Peng's YouTube channel and wherever you have it stored, and then can you bring it and then bring it to me so I can display it? That's how the request kind of is like in terms of pure English. So some problems that backend software engineers face in our jobs is making sure everything runs smoothly, efficiently, and without hiccups. So to recap, front end is what you see and back end is what you don't see. 
once again, it's a lot deeper than that and there's a lot more that goes on in the front end and back end world. But that, in general terms, is the overarching structure that governs most applications and websites. And there are a lot more categories to just back end and front end too. There's something called full stack, which full stack engineers do both front end and back end. And there's also the almighty AI and machine learning that you've probably heard of everywhere that every single company just likes to throw out because it is a cool name. Well, there are dedicated engineers that do all of that too and run and manage machine learning as well. And many people think that AI is going to take over the world, but... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> all this explanation was all necessary in order for me to explain to you what I actually do in my job as a software engineer at LinkedIn. But it only makes sense that I explain what I do at my office, right? So let me head there right now and I'll see you at my office to explain to you what I actually do. So without giving too much away because I don't want to get into trouble and I have an expensive lifestyle to maintain, I'm going to be explaining a bit what's already public on my LinkedIn profile. I'm a back-end software engineer, specifically on the systems and infrastructure team. Each front end and back end has many subgroups and branches. It's a complicated network that combined somehow manages to work. But what does that mean exactly? Well, LinkedIn has a fair number of traffic with its, you know, its small share of 800 million users. So imagine having millions of users searching for jobs, adding connections, chatting, and scrolling through the feed all at the same time. That's a lot of requests. My computer can barely handle two Chrome tabs open at the same time without the fans just about to take off, so that type of traffic would literally explode it. But what if I had a million of my computers? Or what happens if maybe I didn't have a million computers, I had a thousand of my computers, but each computer was a supercomputer a hundred times more powerful. That would essentially solve the problem, right? But essentially my job is just to make sure that LinkedIn is always able to run. And that is very important. You don't want LinkedIn to be down in this current job market. So you can kind of say that I am what's single-handedly carrying the US economy right now. No need to thank me. So when we're not coding away, solving problems, like I said before, we are rotting in meetings. And it is not an exaggeration to say that we have uh, so many more meetings than actually doing work. Team meetings every day to discuss updates and whatnot. Longer team meetings every week to discuss what we're gonna do in that following week. Meetings with different teams and projects you're on as updates too. Coffee chats and sync ups with team members, with your manager, with your mentor, with other people from other places, also counts as meetings. And of course, when there's something wrong and everyone's panicking, we all get together and panic in a Zoom call meeting too. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. Everybody just calm down. If you're looking into becoming a software engineer, I guess this would be the perfect moment to plug in my course. But I don't have one, so let me just give you my honest opinion and just a tiny bit of advice. If you're in high school, the easiest, most straightforward way of getting into software engineering is pursuing a degree in computer science in college, and then getting an internship and getting a return offer from that. 85% of software engineers go through that route, myself included. If that's not you though, I definitely do recommend doing some coding courses and boot camps online. A lot of them are free, and even if they cost a little bit, that offset of price is a lot less than the college tuition. If you feel like all of this is daunting and hard and scary, I just wanted to say that I was in your position too. I never thought I would get a software engineering internship, much less a full-time offer, as I performed significantly worse than my peers and classmates in literally every single exam, project, homework, and test, and everything. But I grinded it out, and I worked hard, and I worked on fundamentals, and I still made it. So if I can do it, I know you guys can do it too. Feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram at Marcus Rukopeng if you have any questions. I try to respond to every single comment, but I do get a lot of DMs. I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but I am a big deal here on YouTube. <laughs> but another way to reach out to me is just by in the comment section below. I literally read every single comment. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more software engineering content, technology, and just good quality videos, subscribe to my channel, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you hopefully in the next one. Take care. Bye.